Hello, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Sadak. And we hate movies. To the program. Thank you for tuning in as always. I know it's going to be a good episode when Steve is just laughing at me doing an intro for no reason. Hey, tune this. <laughs> and that impression indicates we are doing an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It's a film from last year. It's called Sabotage. It's directed by Suicide Squad helmer David Ayer. And uh, Training Day and End of Watch. What? Yeah, he directed Training Day and End of Watch. No, no he was did not. Air. I'm sorry. No, that's Fuqua. right. No, they, they flipped it on you because it's like from the <laughs> guy who brought you Training Day and End of Watch. He, I think he wrote Training Day and he probably directed End of Watch. Oh, that's entirely possible. He directed Fury with Brad Pitt. That's right. Yeah, Tank the movie. It's kind of one of those things where like the Judd Apatow thing, you don't even know which one he directed and which one he didn't. Oh, and- yeah. From the guy or from the guys that did the thing yeah, and exactly. brought you this. What's a, what a terrible credit that is. <laughs> What the from the guy who brought yeah from you? the gu- the guy or the guys well because it's, it's so casual and hilarious because they just have so much fun making those movies well that actually got me recently with the the black hat poster and I was it was like from the man who brought you the insider well I was like well he's just producing that and I was like oh no <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> I was like, yeah. nice try, Black Hat. Michael Mann didn't direct. Oh, is it going to direct a Chris Helmsworth movie? <laughs> I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, that that can fall into that category of, like, sexy hackers. <laughs> He's a sexy hacker in that movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe him and Sandy can team up and, you know, do something. Mm-hmm. Get 3.0. Get, get the hack back, man. Yeah. The net 3.0. Get Sandy there, back to the franchise. There is a 2.0. I yeah, think. she skipped it. Yeah, she did, but we should eventually we'll get to it. We'll oh, I'm sure it. we'll be watching it for something. But here today, we're talking about the most recent Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicle, which is Sabotage, which is kind of like based on a mystery novel, like loosely based yeah, on, on an, an Agatha, Agatha Christie Christ. story. What? Yeah, which is hilarious. It, it, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I think they're reaching. <laughs> I'm Agatha sure Christ- they are. Agatha Christie's writing about a bunch of juiced up fucking DEA agents. <laughs> Man, I, the- I don't even know where to begin with this. Maybe Eric, well, do you have a place to start? Well, this no, is- no. Well, first, I just want to do another quick credit. This is actually written by Skip Woods. Oh, right. Who did Swordfish previous episode and previous episode? Another wait, another day to die. A hard? good day to die hard. Okay. <laughs> Which he, I thought he- it was. I thought that movie was called Another Day to Die Hard. <laughs> No, that's probably the next one. That's where he's like, you know what? Find another day to die hard. I'm just going to watch TV. Or a better day to die hard. John, John McClane gives up the booze, starts eating a lot, of, <laughs> eating a lot better. Or it's a, uh, perhaps, this, perhaps today is a good day to die hard, and it's Worf. <laughs> and like, there's terrorists that are inside the Enterprise, and he's like in the vents. Oh, like yeah. everyone's detained, but the security guy. I feel like that was an episode of Next Generation. Maybe not necessarily <laughs> Worf, but there was a lot of crawling around in the vents on that show. Was he wearing a tank top? <laughs> <laughs> I will not put this tank top on. It's not very honorable for a Klingon to wear a tank top. Then I'd have to have extra makeup on my Klingon spine, which happens sometimes. <laughs> I and, should I should um, yeah. clarify because we said we teased that I would explain Frankenstein's monster. Oh which yeah, a lot of people ju- are probably right. like, "What?" Yeah, and a lot of people out there, I'm with you because I listened to the the episode because I wasn't on it, and I was like, "What? What?" Is, I was like, "I know what the next movie is. Am I watching <laughs> the wrong movie?" He looks like a monster in this movie, like Arnold he, Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger had so many surgeries. He looks like he's been patched together by uh, from a bunch of different Arnold Schwarzeneggers. Yeah, there's a couple of different Arnold point O's in yeah. this movie. They, he, you know what he did? He killed that uh, replicant in that Terminator Salvation movie and took <laughs> his skin and put it over his body. I think he may have gone into the plastic surgeon with a picture of him, <laughs> with the cartoon him from that movie. He's like, just do this. <laughs> 
make me look like this. But Arnold, you don't have any facial features. It's just kind of like a, it's a CGI. Exactly. (laughs) That's where movies are going now. Use liquid metal. (laughs) And plus, I was continuing our monster theme, uh, our unofficial monster theme of uh, 2014, worst of 2014. I kind of think it's all, the the through line seems to be damned to walk the earth. (laughs) Yeah, you're not wrong. You're totally right. And the damn to walk the earth in this case is the biggest Expendables team ripoff of all time. So we have Arnold and his like ragtag group of scumbag A- ETA. What are they? ETF? <laughs> no, DEA. No, DEA, yeah. DEA agents. Scumbag DEA. And you know what, folks? I'm not being crass. These people are scum. Yeah. They're human scum. And all I can do when I'm watching this movie, which I've seen twice now, I look at these people and I just think, and not the actors. But the characters in this film, if I was in the world of this movie in the same room as these characters, at least three of them smell like urine. Just smell like outright piss. These are such scumbags, folks. You won't won't see this around wherever you are. Like, there's a guy with cornrows hair, a ratty, weird beard. A white guy, by the way. Yeah, a white guy. And... He's called Grinder. Oh man, the nicknames! If you look around movie. the room you're in right now and you don't see a guy fitting that description, you're doing okay. <laughs> However, if you find yourself in the room with a Grinder, get out of there. Just get out of there as so fast what, as you can. So there's Joe Mangiello as Grinder. Right. Um, Sam Worthington, who I did not recognize in this movie, Me neither. a because he's never had a screen presence that's memorable, and b because I forgot he existed, and C, because he looks like he's running security for Pantera now. As Monster. Yeah. He's Monster. Uh, oh, man. The tripod and Hoagie. <laughs> Is Matchbox. Hoagie... No, well, this... Tripod's a real one. Tripod's a real guy. And Smoke. Pot... And Noob Cybot. <laughs> and Cyrax. Pyra. Well, this is great. It's like, it's monster, which is because he's a monster and he kills people. And there's Grinder, which is the guy who grinds up your bone and eats them. And Lizzie, which is short for Elizabeth. Because she's a woman and she doesn't get a cool nickname. Sorry, Lizzie. Played by Mary Ellie Enos from The Killing and World War Z. Slummited in, in this in movie. An it's an embarrassing role. Dude, it is outrageous. And I, this movie, the, the misogyny written into this film and like the, the obsession with penises. And it's insane, too, because this is one of those movies where that character of Lizzie yeah. is used is she's used as like the. Well, it can't be that misogynist because there's a bitch that's getting in on it with him. And you're just like, Jesus Christ. But here's why it's misogynistic. Because Arnold's basically like, to be on this team, you must use your vagina as a weapon. I want you to infiltrate everything, every drug cartel and organization with your vagina. They are. I mean, that's the other thing, by the way. He does mention they are the best undercover DEA group in the world, right? So they're, like, the best at doing this. So much so that Mary Eno's undercover, like, in this drug house is prepared to have unprotected sex with this drug lord because that's just the job. And the whole thing is, like, Arnold and the rest of the dudes are, like, racing to the <laughs> compound, and she's got the earpiece in. And, and she's doing coke. And she's, she's fucking high and out of her mind on cocaine, she, and she's saying in the radio, yeah. like, you better hurry up and get here because this dude's about to raw dog it with me. But and I, meant, that's not yeah, part of the job description. Not only that, but she had mentioned while it's a, 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 almost a raw dogging occurring, the guy mentions basically it's been, they've been having tons of sex before. This is just the first time he's raw dogging. Oh yeah, because well, she's a sexually liberated woman, everybody, all right? Just, which, is, know, which is fine. Put it in it's... your pipe, Grandpa. This <laughs> okay. ain't your mama's action movie. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Not a movie I want to watch. And she's married to Monster? <laughs> Don't take your work home with you. This is one of those situations where you always, like, you hear it on, like, Stern or whatever, like, a porn star is like, my husband, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, how could that dude be comfortable enough, like, married to a porn star? That's the same situation with this this group. It's like, why would you bother to be married? It's just, it's disgusting. The, the house they live in is disgusting. It just filth wall to wall. The first, their first lines together that lets you know that they're in a relationship 
And Sam Worthington's like, looks like you blew the right scumbag. And she goes, looks like I did. And then they make out. And I'm, you know, I, I wanted to walk out of my living room. I wanted to like <laughs> leave, leave my house. Put up a sign for rent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Abandoned. <laughs> By the way, we start this movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger watching a snuff film. Dude, the fucking, <laughs> my, oh no, this is my motivation. My wife was tortured and murdered. My wife and baby daughter. Well, it's not baby daughter. It's his son. And I can't stop watching it on loop. Because he's just sitting there drinking scotch, watching his wife get tortured. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to help you work through some Smoking shit. Smoking his big fat dick cigars that he's got in his mouth this <laughs> now, entire this movie. Is just Every Arnold. <laughs> on, this is Arnold's like, you have to rewrite that. I, uh, 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 what's his name? Bleacher? <laughs> Breacher. Breacher. <laughs> Breacher smokes the finest cigars. It's like uh, Dean Stockwell in Quantum Leap was never <laughs> the character was not written to smoke cigars, but he wanted to smoke cigars. But that's that, what I I've, that's the legend anyway. Well, it's also the same thing nowadays with Stallone too. Every fucking Stallone character is <laughs> munching on a cigar from here to Kingdom Come, and also shooting up GHB or whatever it's that that human growth hormone. Not GHB. That's the date rape drug. Oops. <laughs> I don't think you're wait, shooting wait, that up. Wait, I've been doing it wrong? <laughs> that's why you're not getting huge, dude. Oh, man. HGH is it? Oh, that's what I meant. That's no, what I meant. I, I wasn't trying beyond, to make any type of joke. Arnold and Stallone are beyond HGH. I think that they're like nosferatu people at this point. Like, they just like go to Czechoslovakia <laughs> and suck this, like, go, go to jibs and then like suck people's marrow out of their bones. Well, if you notice, though, after Stallone got caught with it, when like after the first expendables maybe yeah, that was he had like a giraffe heart in his bag or yeah. something crazy <laughs> he's he's definitely like gotten small again yes because i think it's either it's either that or that rambo movie that he did where oh. that rambo movie he looks like a goddamn monster from fucking space jam like he's <laughs> massive in that movie and you're like that can't be real that's like computers right i think it was after that movie they were like <laughs> You know what, Sly? We're probably going to have to check that gym bag. The whole force just came from seeing <laughs> Rambo, and we probably have an issue on our hands. Yeah, but now, I mean, with Schwarzenegger, it's even worse because he's he's still doing it, obviously. He's juiced to the max in this movie, like the rest of the cast. <laughs> and he's like, he got all this face surgery, so he's just a big walking statue. <laughs> Like he's like fucking Dergolem in this movie. He's finally actually the Terminator. Mm -hmm. He did not have a a, a large facial range uh, to work with as an actor no, beforehand. But think about the face he has on the like the poster for Kindergarten Cop yes. or Jingle All the Way. Yeah, right. He can't make those faces. No, anymore. he can't. He does not have a sly smile or anything. No. So yeah, she's she has sex with this dude or is about to. The whole team breaks in and. They raid this thing, get ready for some Call of Duty violence. Everybody's shooting. Dude, the language on this movie. God. And also, whenever anyone gets shot, doesn't matter where, like in the leg or something even, it's just like a, a, a pot of red jello flies against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the, the computer blood is terrible because they can't do that right yet. Yeah, It's kind of like when CGI first came like really started amping up in like the early 2000s and they still hadn't figured out like rain and mm. wind and shit right mm -hmm. that's where we're still at now with blood like this is 2002 looking blood yes and yeah the language is out of control and it, every time we criticize language i always preface it with i know but this movie we were talking about this earlier today steve like there's scenes where there's just like shootouts happening and overlaid on the soundtrack is just like motherfuck what the fuck was that <laughs> fuck you douche and you have no idea who is talking you never oh, see and you just you never see it it's not even when shootouts happen when they're all like hanging out together those scenes that give me anxiety because oh my it's god like it's just like you you know the dirt and the filth and there's like what the fuck you scumbag hey man you're a fucking loser blah blah oh, fuck fuck that motherfucking drop on, man. <laughs> It's just, it's so terrible. And also mixed into that, too, is a lot of, who just ripped ass? Yeah. Like, <laughs> why not? Throw in talking about Who's farting. Who's got them cheese farts? 
<laughs> it's like hanging out with a high school football team. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yep. it's, and these people are 50 years old plus. And it's the other thing where it's like they do this a couple of times where you think two people are getting in each other's faces. Yeah. And they're like about to beat the shit out of each other. And then it's just a laugh riot. And everybody's like, oh, I'm fucking with you. Good motherfucker. Fuck you. You fuck. And you're just like, <laughs> wow. Wow. Can everybody stop all of this those are the worst scenes in this movie oh yeah when they're all just gibbering at each other and like drinking and having a good time that's what happens when you get a room full of guys that all their nicknames end in er (laughs) preacher monster oh wait we're forgetting an important one it's not er it's terrence howard playing sugar Uh, and uh, the guy josh holloway from lost playing neck I think they Arnold started running out of creative nicknames. <laughs> uh, you appear to have a longer than average neck. You are neck. Well, the best part is in the middle of this movie. He's like, he's trying to find him, and he's like, neck, neck, where are you, <laughs> neck? And I'm like, yeah, because you have no fucking neck anymore, you monster. <laughs> But then there's the one guy whose name is just like Smoke Jennings. Yeah, he doesn't make it long. He, does, he doesn't make it long, but he also just doesn't have a nickname because everyone what? else is. You think he was born Smoke? <laughs> no, but it's not like a grinder. They're like, hey, this is Smoke Jennings. That guy is always smoking over there. I'm going to call you Smoke. <laughs> like, is that the origin? Maybe. I, you know, Maybe probably. He smoked meth a lot. Oh, that could be. So, I mean, I guess the catalyst for this movie is a deal gone wrong. So they wind up go. There's a, a big room full of money, and it's like a Breaking Bad sized like money cube. And you kind of don't know anything about anybody. All you and you know, everyone's throwing bullshit nicknames at you. You know, you're, it's like you watch one of the bad X Men movies. You're like, who's that guy? <laughs> and they they wind up shoving ten million dollars down the toilet because it's like they can't walk out of the house. Yeah. With money on them, because at the end of the day, they're still technically law enforcement personnel. So the idea is we're going to th- tie a rope around all these bricks of cash and put it down the sewer drain. And yeah. then we'll go into the sewer afterwards and get our money. Sure. But before they can do that, they have to take apart this shit filled toilet. And I was like, you know what? It's bad enough. I just had to sit through like the fart jokes and all of this going on about fuck you, motherfucker, you fucking piece of shit grinder and all of this kind of nonsense. Then to just come to a shit filled toilet and they're all like, oh, you motherfucker who said the toilet was going to be filled with shit. And they're all like throwing up over it. And you just have to watch these two men remove a feces filled toilet. Here's the th- you get uh, you hire a plumber and you cut him in on the action a little bit. <laughs> Just oh, don't get bit. my newest recruit plumber. Get in here, plumber. <laughs> this is Mario Mario. Mario Mario, say hello to Nick. <laughs> Grinder. This is Smoke Jennings, <laughs> Animal, and the rest of the Muppet Babies. Oh, that's just Lizzie. <laughs> and Lizzie. Sorry, Lizzie. You'll get your nickname sometime. <laughs> Hey, how about suck dick a lot? Is that a good <laughs> nickname, guys? Because she's a woman. They're all equal parts of my team. So, whatever, man. Smoke Jennings gets killed in this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. We get down to the sewer, and it turns out, after another five minutes of fuck you, motherfucker, who fucking farted talk, they discover that someone has beat them to the sewer And cut the rope and stolen the $10 million. So it's all for nothing. Uh, Smoke Jennings. I've been double-crossed by Mario Mario. (laughs) Smoke Jennings died for nothing now. (laughs) Can we also talk? There's just really quickly, because the misogyny of this movie is... This is the most misogynistic movie we've done since The Butterfly Effect. Oh, absolutely. This is a level 10 misogyny, man. Is There's like this weird lesbian scene for no reason. It's like B-roll. Like these oh aren't my- even characters. <laughs> and it's, it's these two women going at it. Like, are you serious? The movie didn't even start yet. It's, it's before the I'm not wearing a condom <laughs> moment. Like yeah. he breaks up lesbian sex yes. to be like, get out of here. I'm going to fuck this coke-addled woman now. <sighs> It's, it's it's just such an excuse. It's just like a, uh, this is a movie for guys. You know what like guys like to watch? You know, sometimes guys just like to watch movies. Is that all right, America? <laughs> Can't a guy just watch a guy movie? Yeah, where a guy murders 50 other guys and then uh, abuses a young woman. 
put maybe sprinkle in some lesbian sex and a shitty toilet. Oh, grind up. <laughs> I need you. Also, by the way, uh, great, um, great tough guy name, Grinder, named after a gay sex app. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Grindr, he, wait, wait. that's why they call him Grinder? Maybe he's he's on that shit on the reg. So you know what, Grinder? <laughs> I'm going to tell everyone else on the team it's because you like novelty sized sandwiches <laughs> from Middle America. Your secret dies with me, Grinder. We all know the real reason why you have that nickname, Grinder. And I, I saw w- your phone. So there's no e. There's no e in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's an e free nickname. And then we get into some like, swipe left grinder. <laughs> so we get into like the <laughs> investigation, which is more people like it's just like it's so bloated. Pe- fat people cursing at them for five minutes, essentially. <laughs> like it's enough tough guys cursing at each other. Now fat people are gonna start <laughs> cursing at muscular dudes. Because this is all <laughs> it's all like oh. Oh, just like the bureaucracy at the office, everyone's all oh, the upper management's fat jerks. Well, what they don't <laughs> they don't really explain to you because this no. movie is terribly put together. Like you have no concept that like this team has been dissolved after this toilet incident no. and all the money went missing. Like you just see them interrogated and everyone berating this team of investigators, which is a comically fat man, and then the dude who played um he was on uh, uh, Angel for a little bit. He was Fred's father on Angel. He's in a bunch of stuff. He he kind of is uh, not Gary Shandling to me. Like oh nice, like, Gary Shandling's like uh, uglier younger brother. <laughs> oh. But it's so it's these guys being like, listen, we're kind of sure you stole ten million dollars. Like, Where's the fucking money, you pussies? Like, get out, get out of my face with that bullshit. <laughs> oh, you want to call me a pussy? I'm about to call you a fucking fuck face. <laughs> It's just going to continue in a vicious circle until somebody gives up. You, you have 48% body fat. (laughs) Dude, just calling out this man's obesity. (laughs) And let me tell you something. That shuts him up. It does. Arnold storms out of the room and those two are left silent. Well, because he's just like, you're, you're, the guy's got some points. He's like, you know, you're a dirty cop, you son of a bitch. He's like, yeah, well, you're fat. (laughs) That's the same difference as being a homicidal maniac. Is overeating around the holidays. And uh, listeners at home, you may think this scene sounds amazing, but it's shown on like the shittiest video camera quality ever. Like this movie thinks it needs to do this aesthetic where you're like watching the interrogation cam, like of yet, what the police were filming on at the time. Yet this interrogation cam has several different angles and is edited. Yeah, well, yeah you got close ups of Arnold's eyes like going back and forth, like. Whoa, did I do it? Was it Lizzie or was it was it Grinder? I bet it was secret homosexual Grinder. <laughs> Monster would never do this to me. <laughs> I know you, Monster's okay. Monsters, you know how Monster got his nickname because he loves Metallica, some kind of monster. <laughs> And he was watching, he was wearing that DVD out. We were like, dude, you're like monster over here. Dude, it's funny you mentioned that. At work, at work today, I walked by the break room, and sitting on the break room table was some kind of monster. <laughs> that new movie on DVD, the Through the Never. Oh, oh yeah. The 3D movie. And like one of their older albums, all still in the plastic casing, just sitting there all day long. Not a soul took it. That's really strange. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what I love also about, so like the team is dissolved. The movie doesn't tell you this. It doesn't give you a six months later. You find out six months later, it's six months takes place because of like dialogue later in the movie, but you have no idea how much time takes place. But Not Because the credits cuts this up and it's like sabotage. But what's awesome is there's a scene where it's like Arnold is working at a desk and it's him just like hardcore <laughs> filling out this paperwork <laughs> dude <laughs> he's, he's, the cubicle is just amazing in this he's got, yeah he's got a spreadsheet and he's just got this shirt and like basically like he's still going to work and everyone tells him not to go to work like it, this boss goes, you're a fucking joke schwarzenegger you're a joke <laughs> preacher you can't even fucking you can't even do formulas right you piece of shit that's what i love in this scene though because that guy like spouts a bunch of nothing and arnold's just like yeah well we'll see what the investigation turns up and then there's like this awkward silence and the guy just goes 
Yeah, well, fuck you, Breacher. <laughs> <laughs> Just walks out. Also it's so awesome. Also, outside outside of Arnold's like Spanish villa that he lives in, there are these two cops like trailing him and stuff. And we have to have this edgy dialogue scene where these two guys are like, I'm not gonna piss in those bushes. Oh, Re- this, yeah, Breacher's gonna kick my ass if I piss in those bushes again. Oh, right. There's a stakeout. Like they're all being tailed. Yeah. But we don't know this because we only follow Arnold through all of this. And yeah, it's these two FBI agents that are like bantering about like the one guy's got to go to the bathroom on the stakeout. And the guy's like pissing this jug. And he's like, I'm not putting my dick where your dick was. And then like Arnold comes out like, <laughs> stop pissing in my bushes. I'm going to work. <laughs> yeah, to- but that went on for a while. He was just like, well, I bet your dick couldn't even fit. Or, you know, your problem is your dick would fit in that thing too easily. <laughs> like it's like going back and forth about dick girth. And you know what? We never see those characters nope. ever again. And we never see their dick girth. We never get a full measurement on Cinema. the dicks. Show, don't tell. <laughs> so Martin, the ghost of Martin Donovan invites him into his office <laughs> and is basically like, you know, fuck, fuck, fuck. By the way, you're back on the case. <laughs> like, he's like, you've been re- reinstated. Uh, uh, he actually says... You must have a picture of a senator fucking a goat or something, preacher, because you're back on the case, motherfucker. And it's like, okay, must everyone in the world talk like this? It's I was like, dude, you are like a commanding officer at the DEA. This this conversation might be recorded for quality assurance. Yeah. Like, come on. You're talking about goat fucking? So he's like, okay, I'm going to round up the rest of my team who's Somehow in a big house together, sleeping on bunk beds, I guess. Dude, it's like the most disgusting r- the real world has ever been. Yeah. Like the MTV show, The Real World. It's like, like hoarders. Like when those people get all scuzzified on those shows, just living in a house. Yeah. Imagine it with these people. People named Monster and Grinder <laughs> and Lizzie. Oh, my God. Just picture that. <laughs> you thought that toilet was full of shit before. <laughs> Well, Man, the, the stuff that's around this one. A couple of dudes are playing Call of Duty, which is awesome, or some, like, shooting game. Oh, yeah, dude, because you know what? You got to stay sharp. <laughs> we might be grounded, man, but doesn't mean I can't get a couple shots off in the VR world. <laughs> Oh man, I got this code where I could I could fly drones in Iraq with my with my Xbox. <laughs> oh no no, Lizzie, you wouldn't like this. You can't sleep with anyone in this game. This is for shooting only. <laughs> then she, Lizzie's like just boxing a punching bag that's just in the middle of this room. It's all like I wouldn't fuck with your dick. How are you married to that? And I'm like, aren't you guys friends? <laughs> like, well, that's you know? uh, that's the thing. Everybody loves getting this close to fighting with other also, people. Also, and then you just start laughing. There's some ten- there's a little bit of tension because you know start like grinder starting to suspect that some of you guys might be in on that missing money. <laughs> <laughs> like, because they've they, they've had the DEA brass breathing down their necks. They're like, so we're told we don't see any yeah, of it because so, it's all Arnold for twenty minutes. Exactly, but it's like alluded to, I guess. And then it's just like a monster has a line later on that's like, like you, you know what, preacher? We're not we're not a team anymore. That's a problem. We're a gang now. They're acting like we're a part of a gang. <laughs> By the way, uh, there is a three hour cut of this movie somewhere. Oh, that's yeah. that's that no that's a real thing yeah the, that's the where original, all these missing details the are. original draft of this movie that he that david ayer turned in was three hours of these idiots cursing at each other <laughs> and of course the, the the company was like no supposedly there was there was more mystery and nuance and it was more you know more of a mystery thriller it was closer studio. to that agatha christie book i'm telling you it must have been dead on <laughs> Oh, here's my magnifying glass. I'm going to follow the clues. Also, Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> on closer inspection, it appears that I'm wearing loafers. <laughs> also, can't forget, uh, in this scene, while the PlayStation is happening, the boxing is happening, everyone is smoking inside this house. <sighs> uh, Grinder is giving an at home tattoo to Pyro. Yeah. And it's some like. <laughs> Pyro? Yeah, it's Pyro. Pyro. Okay. Pyro's the dude. Pyro's the dude. He and kind of looks like Mike Rowe a bit. Does he look like Mike Rowe? A bit. No, who's the dirty work guy? That's Mike Rowe. Yeah, he looks a bit like him. So he's getting this tattoo where it's like a skull and then like 
he's drawing his spine like down his spine yeah which is somehow a tattoo that is a tribute to smoke jennings by the way sure and everyone comes into the gag he's like oh hey grinder why are you drawing a dick on his back <laughs> and we had smoke's that- dick <laughs> that's smoke jennings dick you have respect for that dead dick but it's just it's another gag where we oh, repeat it like four times like you know, oh my God, why are you drawing a dick on his back? And he's like, dude, does it look like a dick? Get me a mirror. And then like Arnold comes in. He's like, what the hell is going on in here? It's like a frat house. It smells like garbage. Why do you have a dick on your back? And you're like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, Oh, Arnold, rounding out the joke. You know those like, they, they say like, oh, Scarface had like 200 instances of the F word or yeah. whatever. Yeah. This movie is it's a just thousand. dick. Di- yeah, not only that, but it's got like. A thousand dicks. It does have so many dicks. Like, oh, my dick, your dick. Whose dick? Why dick? Lizzie's dick. So he's like, okay, you ru- you crumb bums. Get off your <laughs> bottoms. We're going to start training now because we're back on the case. And we get this training montage. And I, at this training montage, I was kind of hoping for the movie to turn into this thing where it's like, Come on, the DEA contest is coming up next week. We've got to, we've got to get ourselves back into shape. We have to beat the red team in the obstacle course so we don't get our badges back. That would be so great. The talent show. Come on, Grinder. Basically taking like a plot from like Police Academy. Like, do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Way it's- better than what this devolves into. Oh, Lizzie, you blue commandant Eric Lassard. <laughs> Just like Mahoney did at the end of that movie. <laughs> yeah, or at least lo- it was alluded. There was right. they thought it might have been Mahoney blowing him, but it wasn't. No, they- just clarifying that Steve Gutenberg <laughs> doesn't do that in that movie. They think he does though. So we've got like a training montage where it's like, oh, Grinder, you didn't check the corner. You're doing this all inappropriately. You're supposed to be a team right now. And they like totally blow it or whatever because someone didn't check behind a door. Yeah. And so then that's when (laughs) Sam Worthington, he gives this whole speech about like, you know what, Arnold? Because he's like really bad at covering up his Australian accent. We haven't gotten to the worst accent yet. We'll get there. Oh, it's really bad. And he's like, he's like, all right. Uh, Arnold, you know, the thing about being a team is that, you know what, we're a gang. And Arnold's like, wow, those are some powerful words, monster. I'm going to give them some serious thought before we run this training exercise again. I imagine every morning when Sam Worthington was getting ready for work, he's just like in his apartment and like, it's like, it's all like Michael Mann blue in the early morning. And he's like on the phone with James Cameron. Like, you think that script's going to be done anytime? <laughs> Like, do I really have to do this one more day? You're really taking your time with these new Avatar movies, aren't you? You want them to be perfect, I know. No, it- but I'm dying out here. It's cold out here, Jim. I'm making a fucking movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You remember him? <laughs> you know what my name in it is? It's Monster. <laughs> I don't know why. What? I didn't ask. What was, what was his name in Avatar? Oh. David or something? Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Ted. Ted Avatar. I could have been Ted Avatar again. <laughs> I could have been that Ted. Does the end of that first Avatar uh, round off with him deciding to be a tall blue squirrel yep. creature yeah. forever? Yeah, he's like, yeah. I want to be this guy forever. And it's like this stupid magic that lets him do it, even though it was a technology. Man, that movie's terrible. Now, now, <laughs> now, yeah. now he can um, interlock his braid into lady braids and have mind sex. Hey, Lizzie, I'm going to lock my braid into you. <laughs> my goatee braid, which I totally have in this movie. Dude, he looks <laughs> disgusting. I mean, they all look disgusting, but he looks disgusting. <laughs> Now, if that makes any sense. Speaking of disgusting, the plot <laughs> has hits a standstill because we got to go to a strip club because we work hard, we play hard. Because we're men and this movie's for men. Dude, and- there is some line where Arnold's like, now we have to go. It's something like, it's not this, but it's like, let's go pray at the altar or yeah, one of those oh, yeah. things. And he says whatever that line is and then someone's like, strip club. Like, just so the audience was aware 
before we instantly cut to them in a strip club. Yes. And like everyone's having a great time and it's more bebop. And it's, they get into a fight with a bouncer. Like how fucking white trash are you? It's because they get into a fight with a bouncer. It's even worse though. It's because Terrence Howard is like, you know what? I could dance better than you guys. And he gets up on the pole and starts like drinking this. And then the bouncer comes over like, hey, could you not uh, harass and assault our dancers? And then Grinder Joe Manganiello, <laughs> comes over and like, oh, yeah, motherfucker. And they just get into a big beef fight. Yeah, he swipes left right across his chin. <laughs> the guy goes down. He, I think they killed him. I think <laughs> that bouncer's killed. And then it's it's this dude might be dead. And then it's like, well, time to get out of here, I guess. And you're like, how many times do they you do this? You could have just done that originally. You could have just walked out. But no, you had to punch him. This is my favorite scene. What's coming up now is basically uh, Pyro wakes up in his trailer because this movie is exactly the white oh trash Godfather. God. Yeah. Or in <laughs> this case, the white trash, the fugitive. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, he, God. He wakes up and he's like, oh, man, I got to take a piss. And he takes a piss and he's like, What's that noise? I think he takes a piss in his sink, by the yeah. way. Oh, Which does is, he? I think it's in his sink, in his trailer. And, you know, sometimes you got to do it. You it's a pretty nice it. trailer, t- to be honest. It's, it's I didn't think it was room. a tra- I thought it was an RV. Is it an RV? Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, yeah. it's a Winnebago. Because he tries to start it, and it's another of the thousand. What the fuck? <laughs> like when the car doesn't turn <laughs> over. And basically, he's, somebody parked his RV on, a, on train tracks. <laughs> And, like, I guess glued the door shut or something. We never know. He just tries to open a door, and it doesn't open. And if you're such a beefcake, break the window and get out of there. Like, yeah. Exactly. And he doesn't do that. And he doesn't He doesn't even move to the rear of the vehicle. He just. He's just like, oh, there's a train coming right at me. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. And he's looking right at the light <laughs> coming at him. And it's like, would he at least move to the end? <laughs> well, it's either I leave this trailer and live. Or maybe I have enough time to get my seven dust bootlegs out of here. <laughs> Better <laughs> wait. Save <laughs> these original boots. Maybe if I stiffen up because I'm such a real tough dude and I stay put, <laughs> that I'll break that train. Hey, you know what? I'm going to stand my ground with this train. <laughs> <laughs> this train's not coming into my house. <laughs> so he gets annihilated by this locomotive. Thank not God. Not surprising. And now enter... I, I mean, I, don't, I, I think Muriel Enos is a great actor. She's great on The Killing, and she's really slumming in this movie. Yeah. But Olivia Williams wins the slumming at least. Holy Toledo. It's like she, a long way from Rushmore. Yeah, she is a better class of actress than this movie could ever dream of having. And I don't know if there was like a year of prep school that she needed to pay for yeah. getting the driveway done, the house resided. Like I know people have to work, yeah. but what was going on that you had to do this movie? Cause you didn't want to do this. Movie. No, clearly not. Something in your life made you do this movie. And that is fascinating to me. And I think this is the worst female written role of the new millennium. Like since fucking since 2001, since nine 11, this is the worst <laughs> female written role because it's not a female written role it's clearly a thing where it was just a ball busting dude like the rest of it yeah and then someone like some executive somewhere was like you know we better have more than one female character in this movie the strippers don't count because they're kind of just extras what about that lesbian scene (laughs) there's two right there well what about you trimmed it down it used to be an hour (laughs) what to make it by three hour cut to be fair, his wife is a character who only exists in torture flashbacks. <laughs> that is true. I don't see why the lead detective has to be changed to a woman. I watch a woman get tortured and murdered on film four times in this movie. Every, every day, Preacher has to struggle with playing, pressing play on the snuff tape to see, <laughs> to see his wife. I mean, Just one last chance to glimpse upon his beauty. I mean, I guess we're doing a Lifetime movie. Fine, make her a woman. Because <laughs> she also, and it's not even when she's trying to, like, talk up against Arnold. Yeah. It's also, and and his clan of idiots, it's also when she's, like, just at the office with her partner, who's played by Harold Perrineau, also from Lost. Mm. And she's just, like, 
trying to do this southern accent. It's like, you know what? Why don't you try to suck my dick too? And you're like, wow, Olivia Williams. I mean, it's a bad southern accent. I, I, I think it's probably because she's not trying at all because she hates this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's the worst accent. Because I have a feeling if Olivia Williams wants to do a southern accent, she's gonna do a southern accent, and instead she's doing a chicken fried foghorn leghorn voice, and it's and horrible. Here's the thing: it's like I was reading about this after the fact because I found that, and I, I, I guess it's like it takes place in the Atlanta area. Yeah. Right. Which is but, the one thing I will give this movie credit for shot on location in Atlanta and they just set it there. Right. I hate these movies where it's like, we're going to film in Atlanta. And for whatever reason, it's passing as Seattle. I say up the Atlanta in this movie, because I felt like it almost could have been any town USA. Yeah. You don't know it's Atlanta until like the middle of the movie. Where she's like, I'm an Atlanta law enforcement agent. Right. <laughs> That's that's generous with her southern accent sounding. <laughs> so she gets on the case and like Arnold Schwarzenegger come, is like, oh, no, what happened to my man? He he's somehow all, he's, gets the call. He does because you don't well, you don't know what his deal is, like how he's getting these calls. Really? Like, is it just law enforcement looking yeah. out for each other or is he in on it? Who's sabotaging who in this yeah, film? Yeah, there's a sabotage there, yeah. Some, <laughs> somewhere in here, there's a sabotage. Ah, uh, this appears to be the work of a saboteur. I'm going <laughs> to put that out there. I'm going to find him, and I'm going to crush him with my hands. And Harold Perrineau was is like, you know, is like, oh, man, that's the best DEA agent in the world. You know who that is? And, like, Olivia Williams, too endear herself to this Ugh. movie she's like well why don't you just go suck his dick then and it's like <laughs> well congratulations well you'll fit right in fine here olivia you have no problem saying this line great S- sound familiar of uh, another skip woods written screenplay in which Halle berry says the exact same thing yep oh you're totally right because i'm skip woods and that's just how i think i write powerful women <laughs> They like to throw it back in my face when I talk to them about sucking dick. So they got now they say suck a dick. Clickety clack, motherfucker. <laughs> Clickety clack, bang bang, skip woods. <laughs> oh man, my my keyboard looks like a bunch of guns. I got it special ordered, man. <laughs> looks like a couple of Glock tens. Every word I type is another bullet in the heart of the enemy. And the, the enemy. enemy is conventional motion pictures. <laughs> no, the enemy is the audience. So she's on the case of this great train explosion. And <laughs> she's like, well, I have to interview the team. Let me go to Pyro's memorial service, which is at Arnold's Villa. And this thing is gore. It's like this beautiful lake house. It's insane. You know, the whole question is who took the money? Arnold took the money. If he's he's a DEA agent, he's got this fucking house that's built on a cliff. He's the living. rest of them live in a clubhouse together. That's <laughs> subpar for the real world. And this place looks like the like Mexican cartel mansion, but it's in America, <laughs> so it's worth even more. So she opens the door, and Lizzie's like, "What are you, the stripper? Get inside!" And it's like, "Shut up, movie." It's it's a big shut up movie. She's like strippers here. Like shut up. Why would you hire a stripper for smoke? Whatever his name is, smoke Johnson. No, this is Pyro now. Oh, it's Pyro's funeral. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They're dropping like flies. <laughs> so because Pyro loved him some strippers. He remember we he punched a bouncer once. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That happened seventy two hours ago. And she gets into it. You know, she's trying to get everyone, trying to get, you know, quotes for, you know, her investigation. And Grinder gets in her face. And it's a white trash distinction of almost raping a woman at your best friend's memorial service. <laughs> like, that's he, like the hat trick. He would have wanted it that way. <laughs> yeah, Pyro would have wanted it that way. It's this, like, chain of intimidation that starts with Lizzie. Yeah. Like, she's given all sorts of shit. And the funny thing is, Olivia Williams' character is like, listen, this is an open and shut case. He yeah. was drunk. When we found the booze, you know, yeah. he just fell asleep. He got hit by the train. It's open and shut. I just have to have a statement from the last person that saw him alive. Like, this is going to take two seconds. And they're like, you want to get out of our fucking face with this right now? What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to do? But you're cops, and she's a cop. Like, what about some solidarity? And then they're like, well, well why don't you have a beer then if you're going to be here? <laughs> and she refuses, and then they go off on this tirade I can't even recall. Oh, what? You're telling me you don't want a beer? 
This is Pyro's memorial service. You will drink this Pap's Blue Ribbon that I am forcing in your fucking face right now. And she takes it and she's like, yeah, okay, I'll have this beer. And she opens it and sprays it in his face. Yeah. And it's like, he's like, that's how I like it. And like gets ready to do this. And then Arnold's like, stop it. This is my house. Stop acting like animals. So Arnold's like, all right, listen, if you leave right now, because no one's going to hurt you. Yeah, they're about to tear you limb from limb for no reason. Uh, if you leave right now, I will make sure tomorrow because she wants to talk with Nick. Yeah, <laughs> he's like he was like, I will bring you to see Nick tomorrow night. Just leave right now doorbell rings there's a woman there and she's like the stripper it's the stripper huh? and she says something about like oh they don't tip very well and arnold's like ha, 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 get in here <laughs> the, oh, the stripper here all right put away those cheese farts <laughs> you know can i put pause on this episode because we haven't talked about arnold's stupid haircut yet oh yeah I let's, mean, go, let's get into it. He looks like Macklemore's grandfather. It's like <laughs> nobody should have, no one over the age of 40 should have this haircut. He looks like the guy in a Cialis commercial that's about to start a rockabilly band. <laughs> oh, right. Like it's like, oh, look how young old people can be these days. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Cause it's like, well, I have to be able to run with all these 40 something DEA agents. <laughs> and well, to be fair, he's got a, it's an authentic Austrian haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He kind of looks like J. Edgar Hoover if you gave him gamma radiation. <laughs> I am now Super Hoover. Come see my movie, Super Hoover, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as the mutated J. Edgar. I am having a great time spying on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> as Super Hoover. In the Super Hoover script, they wanted to put in the cross-dressing, but I threatened to walk. <laughs> You'll never see me wearing a dress. I was like, no, it's not. It's that's not the kind of movie we're making. It's more like intimidation game where we put all that shit in a box and forget about it. You mean imitation game? Oh uh, yeah. Although intimidation <laughs> game is what they would call imitation <laughs> game if Arnold starred in the movie. Oh my god! <laughs> the, the, the greatest crossword puzzle ever is beating Enigma. <laughs> Edward Enigma, the Germans have I, I think that would be a tough one for Arnold because they're like, Are you sure he's on our side? Yes, I would love to beat the Germans. <laughs> I am Alan Turing. <laughs> Kira Knightley, let us get married. <laughs> I am all for this lavender marriage, Kira Knightley. It will surely benefit both of us. <laughs> I will only say that I'm homosexual two or maybe three times and it will be referred to off screen and it will be a huge boon for the L LGBT community. What a hero I am for doing this movie. Coming this Oscar season, it's the intimidation game. <laughs> oh, mercy. Anywho, uh, <laughs> neck gets stapled to the ceiling, I oh, guess. Oh, wow. It's, and let me tell you, there's a couple of things that are really embarrassing for a person when you're at work. Okay? So, like, <laughs> if you are, if you're, like, you know, uh, working in, like, the restaurant business, like, you're a, you're a table server, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you drop a plate of food, mercy, that's embarrassing. You know sure. what I mean? Or like you're taking, you're a janitor and you're taking out the garbage and the bag of garbage just for oh, that's Oh, no, that's embarrassing. If you're a homicide detective <laughs> and you're walking in a house and you slip and bite it on a pool of human blood in the dark, really embarrassing. <laughs> she goes down in this movie. Yeah. Oh, Olivia Williams just falls in this man's blood pool. And she gets up and Arnold's like, do you want the tissue? As she's like dripping with blood. And you can tell she's so humiliated. She's like, just, just get me out of here. They hung neck from the ceiling. They skinned him it's like the predator. <laughs> and it's a thing where they're like, oh, like she makes the connection. 
oh, well, I've noticed that uh, you're accused of ripping off this drug cartel. Mm. Uh, I know a bunch of drug cartels that nail their victims to the ceiling or to the wall yeah. or to the By floor. The way, she had she had seen the video where he yells at the fat guy. <laughs> it's just it's my favorite part of the movie. You could actually search on YouTube. I, I think it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger yells at fat people or something. <laughs> It's a good time. You know, Arnold yells at fat. You'll, you'll find it. That's a good, that's, that's a good combo. Um, and, I mean, we kind of just skip forward. Uh, who else is next? Because, really, I mean, the reason this is based on the, the Christie novel is, like, and then there were none. Because, like, every scene somebody's getting killed or, like, it's right. like this big mystery about who done it. people who, who, who done it, if yeah, you will. Who it's done a, it? It's a real Arnold Schwarzenegger who done it. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> An Arnold Schwarzenegger mystery. Uh, by the way, the Beastie Boys refuse to let their mu- their music be used in this movie. God bless them. Which I I love it. Adam Yauch in his will, and before this too, before he passed away, the Beastie Boys always did this. But in his will, stated that forever in perpetuity, the Beastie Boys music would not be used to sell things. So they wanted to put the sabotage in the trailer, and it was like, uh, nope, you're barred from doing this forever. Which is, uh, that is some beautiful integrity from the Beastie Boys, man. God bless. But I just, uh, what is that meeting like, right? It's like, so listen, we know that you famously uh, (laughs) never allowed anyone to do this. But, um, well, it's for the new Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, get out. No, 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 hear me out. We've got the posters done on everything. We can't (laughs) can't go back on, we can't go back on Sabotage. (laughs) It just had to be Sabotage. Even though that's not really what's going on here? yeah and it wasn't the original <laughs> title either it had two different original titles i read which were 10 <laughs> good one <laughs> and breacher oh breacher, breacher the movie <laughs> while i star as jack breacher <laughs> jack breacher but I, oh you know what <laughs> they they barred us from using the rights but Unfortunately, Mr. Yauk forgot about the karaoke rights. <laughs> I will sing it now. I'm telling all y'all, is sabotage, right? Right, audience? It was, the, it was the best loophole in a contract I ever found. I don't know. I mean, this is the scene. This is my... Fi- so she's, like, really up against in this investigation. She's, like, she's suspecting Arnold because he's always there at the wrong time, etc., and uh, Sam Worthington shows up and goes like, you know, there's something you need to know about Arnold. There's this really cool backstory. <laughs> and it's like this useless thing about how his Whoa. wife and kid were kidnapped and killed. Oh. And this is, <laughs> his son is in one scene where he's like, I love you, dad. And he's like, oh, I love you too, son. And oh. isn't there, is there, or is there not the tossing of a baseball? There might, there might be. <laughs> Look, we are father son. <laughs> That's all it takes to create the bond. You know, you get the rest of the idea. And yeah, <laughs> his wife obviously gets kidnapped and raped six ways from God knows what and murdered. And he's- you don't worry, they do specify all of that garbage. That oh yeah, they, they tell you saying. everything. Oh, they took her eyeballs. And they, did they, this. they say that the, R the, word the cartel uh, mailed pieces of her to Arnold and the son. Yeah, of both of them, pieces of both of them for weeks on end. You know what? USPS, stop that <laughs> shit. Like you know, like honestly, another another delivery for Mister Breacher. Another <laughs> blood soaked envelope for you. <laughs> Have a nice day, sir. Whatever meat club you signed on to is really paying out in spades. Mm, you know, it's hot today. The, the, with your, your shipment of, I'm guessing, Omaha steaks. Oh, they smelled so good on the ride over. I think they might have cooked a little. And no, it's just my wife's leg. And then they sleep together. Which is, like, I mean, this... What the only thing the we know about hell? this character is that she's... A hard-nosed investigator, and she just wants to get the job done, et cetera, et cetera, because she has no other character traits. Olivia, poor Olivia Williams is naked in a pool for five seconds. There's like a, a topless shot. This is the most terrifying scene in the movie because, like, night swimming already kind of freaks me out. But sure. now I have to contend with if I'm swimming at night. At one point, Arnold Schwarzenegger may mysteriously be standing on the side of my pool. Because she just is like swimming and drinking wine, by the way. Very dangerous. Perfect yeah. time to breach the subject. 
And it's just a, like, then she's in a bathrobe yeah. in the house. And she's like, you know, that story that uh, monster told me earlier. Uh, well, it got me incredibly aroused. <laughs> Because there's no other explanation. No, it does. And, like, she, you know, he looks like a monster. You know he what I mean? He looks like Frankenstein's monster. Yes, he does. He looks like Adam <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Although not as good. No, you know what? Know. Actually, if Arnold Schwarzenegger played Adam Frankenstein, oh, man, in that better movie, movie. Way better, more accurate, mm-hmm. too. It would have been better. He's like, like, yeah, that dude is made from a bunch of different dead parts. And Arnold knows cheese ball, you know? Yep. Aaron Eckhart. Wandering around, lost. Actually, you know, you should switch the two roles because honestly, yes. like, Arnold doesn't belong in this movie. That's like no. the biggest problem. Is like it, he just doesn't belong in it. It's not the kind of role that Arnold can play anymore. No, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like because on at seventy years old, he's not doing this kind of work anymore. No, he's not. It's it's called mandatory retirement, gang. <laughs> You're not running around with the DEA at seventy years old breaking up yeah. cartels. Or how about? Take a page from Eastwood's book. Start directing these pieces of shit. <laughs> you directed that dumbass movie Christmas in Connecticut. You can do it again. Yeah, he really I think he, he failed hard on that one and he never he never went back. But he needs to get back in the directing chair. It just like that's why I think the movie um what is it, The Last Stand? Yes. That's a way better like twilight of his action superstar career. Arnold movie. That is when I sparkle. Because that's like a, here's a dude, he just wants to be a small town sheriff, like, yeah. no funny business. And the funny business comes to him, and he has to do something about it, like, against his will, kind of. This movie, this character, is like seeking this shit out. And he's the best of the best at 85 years old. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He still continues to be the best of the best. At least have it be a thing. There's not one mention in this movie of I'm getting too old for this no. shit. Why don't you retire, old man? Like, yeah. there's none of that. Lizzie, hold my teeth. <laughs> I'm going into battle. I'm going to bust into this crack house now. Please take my dentures until the door is breached. Oh, I'm at Olivia Williams' house. Good thing I had my Cialis today. <laughs> also, he definitely goes over there solely with the intention of having sex with her. Oh, sure. There's not even any kind of like, I thought of some new information <laughs> no, about your case, and I had to rush right into your backyard to tell you. There's none of that. But he's also playing both sides, because the next scene, like, I guess, what did he put, a bug on her or something? Like, they find out. They find a lead in the case about where the cartel might be because they're they're convinced it's the cartel at this point, right? And they, they they're they're gonna they're gonna breach their own house with the SWAT. And he's like, "Not nah, uh, not on my watch. I'm gonna get the gang back together." Yeah, what is that like? <laughs> she like calls him or something because they're like, he's like, "I've got to butt it up." Like they're like boyfriend girlfriend or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We are now officially in what I like to call a long term relationship. <laughs> so he's just like, like, oh, let me know when uh, you know stuff's going down. And then she does, and then he's just like, grind the neck. We're going. <laughs> My girlfriend told me where the next bust is going to be. Let's suit up. Let's ruin her credibility immediately. <laughs> we just had sex 12 hours ago. It's time to start ruining this woman's <laughs> life. What's awesome, too, is the morning after. Because to this movie's credit, and maybe to Olivia Williams' credit, or also possibly this is just a deleted scene because it was 48 minutes long. There's no actual sex scene in this they movie. They don't even kiss, thank God. No, it's I like... I wish I saw that, you know? Do, do you, think, you? Do you think... Yes, I do, because it would be weird and different. <laughs> Do you think? Uh, do you think she said no to the whole? Pre- Maybe it was in the script, or like, and she was just like, like, "I'm not doing a sex scene with Arnold Schwarzenegger." Well, Maybe that was the trade-off. Like, all right, I'll take my, I'll take my shirt off in this pool. You can get that if you want, you fucking pervert. But I am not touching that man. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Into, I mean, who knows? Any of these things is possible. It's all but, in play. But the next scene. <laughs> The next scene is Harold Perrineau picks her up for work. Yeah, and she comes out and like. He sees Arnold's truck or like, because he doesn't see Arnold, I don't think. No. But he just know, and he's like, did you definitely have se- You did. Well, here's your coffee and our relationship has changed forever. Oh, by the way, you're off this case and you're under investigation <laughs> because you just slept with a suspect. Totally. Enjoy that. 
Yeah. You you think that this dude may be murdering his own team <laughs> and you slept with him. Bad decisions got the best of you. This movie needs like a, an amusing end credit sequence where like you, you it's sort of like Ferris Bueller's Day Off where you get that scene of Ed Rooney going on the bus at yeah. the end in the credits. <laughs> Her like like just like not giving a shit walking around writing tickets on cars. <laughs> Oh, yeah. At best. She's been demoted. She's just a meter reader. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of this movie, she might be in the slammer. I'm not uh, I'm not lying yeah. to you. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'll get there, but it's entirely possible. It's just this long scene where they're just busting into houses and, like, harassing people. Yeah. It's this whole, like, neighbor. It's like a housing project yeah. that they're just running through from, you know, house to house, sometimes killing people that draw on them, yeah. leaving the kids alone, thankfully. Yeah. But, again, it's just another scene of... Get out of the way, motherfucker. Hey, lift up that bed, you fucking fuck face. And, and he's just, yeah. it's like 20 minutes. And she shows up and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? And like, and then Grinder's like, hey, clean up an aisle three. Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's great because like they're looking for the specific cartel, which you could tell by the tattoo or whatever. Right. They killed it, this gang, like in this horrific shootout. And then Sam Worthington's like, oops, no tattoo. And they're like, oh, well, bye. We're walking out of this huge homicide. Talk to you later. And it's so awesome. It's I, I would like to put out there that this movie alone could fully stock a brand new, a 100% brand new Arnold soundboard for the internet. <laughs> and one of my favorite ones that would have to be in there is like, they're all walking out. Gr yeah, Grinder's like, hey, clean up on aisle three, the rest of you pig cops. And then... They all walk away, and she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, just, you know, our job or whatever it yeah. is. And she's just like, she's like, how do you even, like, think that you can do this or on whose authority or whatever? And he just goes, I'm a fed. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> and just walks away from her. Left to clean up this bloodbath. Because... As Terrence Howard points out, they killed six people for nothing. Yep, for absolutely nothing. But no repercussion. What? Like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, you just went in here and murdered all these people? N there's a... Guess what? That investigation is back open. Yeah, yeah totally. Oh, yeah. That I, I, fat guy that you harassed? <laughs> he's He's got something else to do again. You're going to see that guy first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes. The fat guy and his weird-looking partner, they're both back assigned to the case. And then at this point, Olivia Williams starts putting it together that somebody on the team it must be doing it because it isn't this cartel for some reason. And then, like immediately, they, uh, they, uh, which Lizzie and Sugar and Sugar reveal themselves as the villains. So they're just like, by the way, uh, in case you're wondering, it was the black guy and the woman the whole time. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Well, they this reveal is a great screenplay. Oh, those point, are the first. They reveal that they're sleeping with each other. Yes. They have this big, like, we're going to meet in the middle of the night. And they're like, so who's, you know, who's doing this? It's clearly one of us. It could be any of us. You know, who knows what's going on? Grinder has to throw in a, is it you, bitch? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. All right. That's how we're talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, I don't know if this is going to help the situation or hurt it. But while my husband monster is here, <laughs> uh, I've also taken a lover with coworker Sugar. And it, and then it just launches into this tyrant. You motherfucking bitch. Burr, 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 burr. It's the Jerry Springer show. It is. <laughs> that is exactly what's happening. Dude, you should have hired Stone Cold Steve Austin to play Steve the Bouncer from Jerry Springer. Yeah. Why not? How did Stone Cold, how is Stone Cold not in this movie? That's, that's a big problem. This is a movie where Stone Cold Steve Austin plays Breacher. Mm -hmm. That's believable to me. Yeah. Not Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I could believe Stone Cold Steve Austin running around with these bunch of animals. Not Arnold. Not 70-year-old hey. Arnold. Who's that Kraut? <laughs> Why isn't that ever coming up? Yeah, well, because he's the boss. He's, and he's John whatever, probably yeah, I, Calhoun or some <laughs> bullshit. John America. I read that this was like the like fourth or fifth time he's played a character named John. Oh, really? Yeah. It should really be a Johan. Yeah, yes, it should. My <laughs> my favorite John by Arnold Schwarzenegger. That could be a fra fragrance or... John <laughs> by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It smells like blood and shit. It was John Matrix in Commando. Oh, that's that the, is a really Mr. Great. Matrix. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mr. Matrix. I'm your substitute <laughs> science teacher for the day. <laughs> you got any great war stories? <laughs> yes, I have a few. <laughs> um, at this point, 
you know, uh, Lizzie and you know Lizzie and Sugar are now outwardly killing people. Uh, Grinder goes to the cops, and like you know, Arnold again is just he bounces between like being this woman's best friend, Olivia Coleman's best friend, and not. So she's like. Hey, Olivia Grind- Williams. Olivia Williams. Olivia Coleman is definitely not being in sabotage. <laughs> Thank God for that. American breakout opportunity or no. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he, they're, they're, they're at this diner and then Grinder gets shot in the head. And it's like, who cares? Well, yeah, but it was <laughs> guess who the trigger man was. That's when I think they reveal. I don't uh, think they reveal uh, in the parking lot scene. It's when Grinder's like, all right, I'm going to tell you bastards everything. Step one, I need some tequila. And his brains go all over this diner. And then she keeps fucking pumping him full of bullets. Like Arnold's like, get down, lover. (laughs) And then it's like, oh, my God, who's doing the killing? And it's like Mario Enos with like a sniper rifle. And she's really just blasting him. It's just this corpse that just keeps getting hit. This is uh, the most interesting scene in the movie coming up, which is where uh, Lizzie kills Monster. Oh my god! Because they're like you know it, it's it's told in this movie jumps around a lot so like it, it's Olivia Williams and Arnold investigating their house and they're like what's wrong what's going on here and you cut back to what happened which is Lizzie accidentally cuts his throat and puts him in a refrigerator turning that upside down by the way how so chill Wh- out no women in refrigerators that whole trope what? of like um that's a trope to, yeah well it's it's like a thing that it's a meme on the internet about like how shitty movies are and how shitty mostly comic books are where, and it's exactly this movie, which is like women are only used to make male characters feel more like, like their death is like, uh, is only to service a male character's growth, which is exactly what happens to his wife. Uh huh. But they flip it in this where she, sh- because in a comic book, in a wait, wait, comic book, actually, wait, wait a second. So in comic books, a common death for women is to be tied up and m- murdered and thrown into a refrigerator. No, it happened once, but it was kind of, it was an, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a symbol for what happens a lot in comics. Well, you know like what my I girlfriend see. got killed. Right. My, my wife now got I'm gonna murdered. Grieve and, yeah, exactly. And then it'll oh, make no. me go forward and be a cool dude, which is what this movie. But, t- Flips on its head. And you know what? Almost Indiana Jones 4 almost did that. <laughs> Unfortunately, he, he somehow lived. I'm going to get in this refrigerator for feminism. Talk to you later. <laughs> I would love it if it's, that movie's just like, Indiana Jones is dead. And it was because of a nuclear refrigerator. And then it's like cut to the Marion Ravenwood movie. Yeah, where she's just she's dealing with it. And she's like, oh, man, I got to get revenge for Indy. Oh, that would be great. That would never happen in a hundred million years. I know. <laughs> but, but Aliens couldn't make that movie. Is, by the time in that movie he got into that fridge, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, nuke it. <laughs> oh, my God. Just end Light this it up. Year. Yeah. So. What I love, again, and it's just amazing moments of Olivia Williams being terrible in this movie, is they do the cross-cutting between, like, the argument and them investigating the house, which I think also happens on another occasion in the film. Who cares? Um, But... Arnold opens the fridge yeah. and it's like the elevator in The Shining. <laughs> so much blood. And she does a really good like <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> her holding back vomit is so hysterical. I wish it was like eerie music and like <laughs> slow-mo blood like filling this dirty floor. Cut to a kid with a moppet haircut <laughs> screaming. Yeah. But you can't hear the scream. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. Listen, if you in your life Especially if it's just like a few days before, hilariously slip and fall (laughs) face first into a pool of human blood. Seeing blood fall out of a refrigerator, not going to induce vomiting. Sorry. If she doesn't do it in that instance of coming face to face with blood, seeing some of it fall out of a fridge is not going to do it. No. But she's she's like, she's a homicide detective. She must see death all of the time. This is just a a quiet, sleepy town here in Atlanta, Georgia. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. (laughs) So now we're in the last act of the stupid fucking movie. (sighs) Thank God. And, you know, um, Lizzie calls Schwarzenegger. It's like, hey, we have to meet for some reason. It's like, hey, good idea. The movie is getting a little long. (laughs) And just imagine what it would be like if it was actually three hours. (laughs) I mean, this movie an hour and 49 minutes which is ridiculous <laughs> and so he's like oh why don't we meet in the parking garage and so like, and, and lizzie and sugar are like 
damn, he's smart. Oh, man, he's good. He's a genius. Oh, my God. A parking structure, which is actually what he calls it. <laughs> yes, please meet us in the car park. <laughs> which, uh, Terrence Howard has maybe five lines of dialogue in this movie. And I keep forgetting he's a character. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. And again, maybe this is a victim of the three hour cut. Maybe Sugar had a whole other arc we just never right, saw. Like Sugar going to the store. <laughs> Yep. Sugar going to the bank, maybe? Go to the doctor? Maybe there's a whole striptease routine in that scene that gets cut down, like death proof. <laughs> and yeah, Terrence Howard dances for Kurt Russell. <laughs> oh, no, I, th- I think Steve met, he, he dances for Lizzie. Yeah. And then they, they get that. But it would be great if Stuntman Mike was there, too. <laughs> well, this is a little weird, but I'll take it. <laughs> He's just going to kill you anyway. <laughs> you know, this would be a, such a better movie if Stuntman Mike was in the background eating sloppy nachos. <laughs> sloppy it, strip club nachos. Like in every single shot, he's somewhere in the background. <laughs> it becomes like a too many cooks thing. <laughs> I'd love it. Oh, man. I mean, they have so, a big shootout. I, I don't they have know. a shootout. They're like, they're well, they criticize Arnold because they're like, oh, he thinks he's so smart. A parking garage is like a perfect place for an attack kind of a thing. We better kidnap somebody. So there's like this like hostage situation for two seconds. Yeah. None of it comes to anything. Then we have this huge car chase. Yes. Through the streets of Atlanta. And it's a really bad car chase. And you barely see anything. Yeah. yeah. It's boring. Like this is the this is like this is your big ending action set piece. Let's get to the finish line. And it was the I thought it was the, the most, most boring du- one. Yeah, yeah, the dullest part of the movie. Because the majority of it is showing what Mariel Enos is doing, and she's just riding in the open trunk of the sedan yes. that they're driving. So all you have to do is have these like close punch ins on her. You don't see anything. I'm no. looking at the trunk of a car for most of this car chase. Yes. And she's do she's terribly over the top here she's like screaming and just spraying this machine gun at arnold i think she's particularly terrible but i do think this movie is 10 times better because she's in it and melon ackerman is not who actually dropped out of this role yeah she Mm. would be worse at this somehow this movie could (laughs) gentlemen this movie could be worse It could be three hours long. Malin Ackerman could be in it. Terrence Howard might be doing a strip tease. I, I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> My God, these, these numbers just don't add up. This oh movie God. could have been worse. But they're right. I have it all right in front of me. <laughs> Terrence Howard gets it. This, it. My favorite part of this thing is this, oh, yeah. this uh, urban cyclist, like this hipster, like gets hit by uh, Terrence Howard and like covers his whole windshield and like, there's blood everywhere because it's this movie. His glasses are everywhere. <laughs> it pops like a balloon, this guy. And, you know, Terrence Howard can't see and drives right into a, like a, a tow truck, I guess, or whatever. It, it's like, yeah, some sort of flatbed truck with like an empty bed. And it's my favorite kind of impaled. thing. impaled. Dude, it is my favorite kind of movie death where someone is driving a car and they drive it into... Some, it's usually like a logging truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where, or like a pole falls off the back of a freighter truck and goes right through the... The windshield this is like he did not duck like the blues brothers do no the whole top of this car is cut open like a sardine can getting the top ripped off of it mm-hmm. and terrence howard is just all over the street He's it's like, next time baby and just gets <laughs> destroyed it's so awesome and so then like you know, she's kind of shot in the backseat. Arnold pulls up like, what are you doing? Why did you do it? Come on, let's get some <laughs> let's get some good exposition out here. And the whole thing is she says, like, so one of you guys stole my money and I just decided I'm going to kill all of you. And he's like, what I else? stole the money. <laughs> I took the money, Lizzie, you idiot. Come on, Cohagen. These people need air. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> and so Arnold reveals... He needed the $10 million because he wants to go back to Mexico and use the money as a resource to help find the guy who killed his wife and son, who he <sighs> keeps... I, I, I have to stop watching the snuff film. I need closure. <laughs> My wife's in the refrigerator somewhere. I need to find her. <laughs> and then, like, Olivia Williams pulls up, and it's like, before anyone knows what happens, Arnold just murders Lizzie. Before she starts like talking too much or whatever, and the most misog- the, the misogynistic coupe de Gracie is this character <laughs> that we've been following the whole time. It's like, why? What? What happened, Arnold? What are you doing? And he just goes, 
why don't you be a good little girl and be quiet and walks out of this movie. And that's the last time we, uh, that's, that's the end of the movie for Olivia Williams. That happens to her. And then the last we see of her, cause then Arnold slips away and Some, Harold, how, how could he slip away? Yeah, dude, he puts a fucking <laughs> invisibility cloak over himself, <laughs> but he just likes, it's literally Arnold Schwarzenegger, the actor backing out of frame and then he's out of the movie yeah like movie law dictates he's gone <laughs> it'd be great if like uh some cop calls him like yeah we got a read on that 80 year old austrian guy that's built like a <laughs> like a truck but he's got long hair uh let him go it's not him not the same guy oh he doesn't have that hip rockabilly cialis haircut no okay you know this guy this guy's actually uh, also built more like a brick shit house. <laughs> so i don't know maybe it's not but so then like Harold Perrino shows up and he's like, what happened here? <laughs> what happened in this movie? And then she's like, oh, well, Reacher will tell you all about it. And he turns around and he's like, Reacher, where's Reacher? Where's Reacher? And she's like, what? He was right here. And then the her line of this movie, the thread of her character ends with her being berated by Harold Perrino, <laughs> after being told to be a good little girl and shut up, yep. Harold Perrino is like, what the fuck did you do? What did you do? Where's Reacher? What the fuck is wrong with you? And you're just like, well, that's, you're being berated forever. That's the end of your character. <laughs> I, it was such an, a jarring and terrible end to that character. I kept expecting her to be in the end of this movie. Like, because right. what, what happened oh, you next mean the 15-minute epilogue? Dude, right, stop it. Right, because he slips away to go hunt these guys. She should be hunting him. <laughs> no, that's what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Like, at the end, like, he gets them, but then she gets him. And it's like, right. oh, wow. So my next note is, Mexico, why? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's a bad boys, too. I, like, yeah. all of it, the movie's over with. Yes, the movie's totally over. And now we're just going to Mexico for no reason. For just, like, a five-minute rampage sequence with Arnold it's just... It's not even a good rampage sequence. It's kind of just a... a it's a rip-off of the end of Unforgiven a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah, that's probably as far as the rip-off goes. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's not true. But Arnold in this cowboy hat... <laughs> let me tell you something. Here's the thing about cowboy hats. If you're going to wear a cowboy hat... <laughs> You need to have a cowboy hat that fits your head. It fits your body, right? So in the case of Arnold Schwarzenegger, wearing a normal person-sized no. cowboy hat is one of the funniest things you'll ever you see. You have to go to a Mexican restaurant where they have a big cowboy hat on a bear and then take that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you know, the one He should have been in a sombrero. He needs a sombrero. A, a regular old cowboy hat is not going to cut it. It looks like he's wearing, like... Woody's hat from Toy Story on his huge body. You need to take it from Senor Moose or something <laughs> and get it off of a cartoon character and put it on your watermelon head. So watermelon head kicks in the door of the Mos Eisley Cantina here and just shoots it up. <laughs> well, he follows one guy into the bathroom who is the guy that was torturing his wife because yeah. I guess like he basically just throws all this money at this Mexican official like Donde esta? Donde estas? And he's just putting like K? stacks of money. <laughs> K? Just stacks of money on this dude's desk. And he's like, well, that's all I have. <laughs> so you're either going to give me the information. I'm going to take all this money back with me. So that's where the $10 million comes in handy. And he uh, he basically follows this guy to the bathroom who's about to have sex with this woman, obviously. I think, yep. Do we get more nudity here or no? No, no, we no. don't. Oh, wow, it's surprising. <laughs> it's very surprising. <laughs> <laughs> boo and boo hey hey i didn't get those cheese farts for nothing <laughs> he winds up so he he throws her down like a sack of garbage and beats this guy up for five <laughs> seconds and then puts a gun on his head he's like and the guy's like you know what man and in perfect english even though this guy's a cartel member he's like i'm the last man that ever had your wife and you're always gonna know that <laughs> Which is kind of a sick burn in this situation. Yeah, it's kind of true too. Like it's one of those. It's one of those characters. It's kind of like um, what's his face in the de the Departed, uh, Ray, uh, whatever his name is, Winston. Ray Winston. It's that same kind of character where it's like you have such a disregard or ambivalence for your own life. Yep. That, like this guy is not begging for his life. No, he's face first in an ice filled urinal mm -hmm. about to be murdered by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's like, you know what, man, I fucked your wife. <laughs> Deal with that shit. When I go to the grave <laughs> and he's like, 
Well, I, well, and I love how he takes the high road here. He's oh, like, yeah, yeah, he <laughs> certainly takes the high road. Chill he's like, out. He's like, well, I could, oh, man, it would be such a good chill out. Right? If he's on the urinal ice? That's a way more appropriate chill out and he than Mr. Freeze. he should have peed on him after, too. Oh, yeah. Well, he's like, well, I could have, well, it's all, he's like, I could have killed your family, but I'm not like you. I'm a real hero. I just killed 41 people <laughs> that were my best friends for no reason. And then that song. From Drive, a real hero starts playing. <laughs> You're a real, real human being. And a real hero. See, they did <laughs> not license the karaoke right, so I get it. I get to sing real hero in my movie. Take that, Ryan Gosling. I told you I would have a dominance over that song. And I, I use this haircut better than you. Look at me. I would love the end credits to be her as a meter maid, walking around just shattered, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger karaoke of a real hero from Drive. Yeah, you look so tough in your big gold scorpion jacket. Well, I'm going to karaoke the shit out of this song now. So it's like he murders this dude and then, you know, he knows he's dead at this point. Then we have the cantina crowd equivalent. Hey, what the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's this huge shootout. He's now this all is, bets are off. He's this killing. Unforgiven. This is the unforgiven shit. Yeah, he's killing men, women, and children. Oh, he's killing scene. so many women in this scene. Oh, it, they are drawing on him, so he is defending sure. himself. He's yeah, defending don't... his American rights in this foreign land. <laughs> it's justified. <laughs> That's another show where someone wears cowboy hats. <laughs> and he just he kills everybody in the cantina for the most part. There's a couple of ladies left like weeping over their friends. <laughs> and he sits back down and like has Oh a, my god, this end is has a sip, dude, and he just takes a pull on that big ding dong cigar. <laughs> And he's just like, that's the movie. <laughs> oh, well, you know he's dead. <laughs> oh, he's yeah, like, he did. He's, he's, he's shot. shot. Oh, no, I've been hit. I better have this Jack Daniels <laughs> and smoke a cigar and read a Maxim magazine. <laughs> See, it's <laughs> while listening to Metallica's later stuff because that's what a real man is. <laughs> this one's for you, monster. It's I disappear. <laughs> <laughs> The karaoke rights. <laughs> oh, man. And then we just cut to credits. And it's like one of the shittiest movies. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that this movie got switched in. Like, yeah. I originally wanted to do this lame Rufus Sewell, Harry Joel, Haley Joel Osment time travel movie, yeah. which is bad. I think it's called I'll Follow You Down. Go check it out if you can. But this movie, man. I mean, here's the thing. That's the movie. It's over with. I would recommend this movie for one reason, okay? Watch this movie, and any other time you dare make fun of Arnold Schwarzenegger for anything else, think about how bad this movie is, yeah. and think about how great we've had it. <laughs> for literally, <laughs> this Whoa. is, I think... The Nadir? It's, dude, it's the worst Arnold Schwarzenegger movie I've ever seen in my life. Well, it's completely joyless, which is a big problem for an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> for starters, yeah. Like, the, nobody's having fun. Everyone's just mean to each other and shitty, and everyone's just cursing for no reason. I, I, would, I would recommend it also. I kind of have to by default, even though it's 25 minutes too long. But I had such a laugh at this movie. More so yeah. than any other movie we've done in tw Best of 2014. It's not the worst movie of Best of 2014, but I laughed at it hardest. It's yeah. it's a laugh riot. You know, I was not going to recommend it, but Andrew, you convinced me with that <laughs> argument. I no, I do think people should check it out just because now you have an accurate barometer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing about it is everyone in this movie has been associated with something far better oh yeah maybe not sam worthington but everybody i mean no like avatar that terminator movie those movies are better than this movie like yes. right. everyone Somehow. everyone has done better you know what i mean even that scrawny dea investigator was on angel and another joss whedon project or two do you think that muriel enos is, is going to kill her career because i feel like she might suffer the worst you know, in this one i would say you might be onto something if anyone saw this movie <laughs> that's that's what i was just about thank to thank god for that you have to see movies to damn people for being in them and nobody saw this movie i mean it, i don't know when it was exactly released i believe it was like early enough on in 2014 hopefully it was 2014 <laughs> i mean it was 2014 for Eve. sure um 
but <laughs> she's bouncing back from this. I mean, she's I think she's, she's a great, great actress. I, I, I do too. Yeah, I think that. But she just got in the wrong movie and like she committed too hard. Like, uh, like do the Olivia Williams thing and kind of back out of it. You know what I mean? If you get find yourself in sabotage, please don't like double ass a movie you need to be half assing your performance in. Exactly. Olivia Williams knows exactly how much of her ass to use in this movie. <laughs> and the fact that she doesn't go over the top, you're just like, all right, well, that's just really terrible. But yeah. you don't care, so it's fine. Like it makes you when Terrence you, Howard is totally half assing this movie. Terrence Howard half asses most things that he's in. But like Mariel Enos, the fact that you're like going so far the other way, yeah. it makes people think you were excited to be in this movie. Which you clearly couldn't have been. I mean, I would be excited to be cast in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie because I'm like nobody and I would love to be in a movie with Arnold. But even still, I'd be like, well, this is terrible. You know, this is clearly uh, terrible. Arnold Schwarzenegger grabbing my head and doing like a Ricky O thing where they smash my brains out. <laughs> That's on my bucket list. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> might do that to all of us if he ever listens to this podcast. And You know what? I would welcome it because it would be a great way to die. It would be an honorable <laughs> way to die. And it would be a fitting end for my run on the show. <laughs> He's going to crush all three of our heads. And then sit down in a bar and drink whiskey and smoke a cigar and be like, I've killed three New York fat liberals <laughs> with 48% body fat each. This is a good day. Let me say this, though. One thing I didn't mention we were talking about, the, the, the very end of this. This movie does indeed leave the door open for a sequel. Does it? No, because you don't see him fucking die, dude. His eyes are open oh, at the end of that stop. movie. No, you're I, just you know you're looking for sequels. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you, all you have if you want to make sabotage two, <laughs> all you have to do you cut back to that cantina, and he's like, oh, oh, and he slumps over the table. Boom! In burst the DEA. We run in there. They grab him, put him on a stretcher. Dude, sabotage too. I think you're because the one thing I was going to give this movie, aside from Winter's Tale, it's the only bad movie we watched in this little uh, compendium that we have for 2014 <laughs> that isn't begging for a sequel. And it's not begging for a it's sequel. It's not begging for a sequel. It's not a, you're not going to believe this. Yes. But if you get some like... Middle Eastern royalty to finance a shitty movie you want to make. You could easily take that script, change four to six things about it, wait, make it sabotage too. Wait a second. If you do know someone like that with deep pockets, get this up and running so that Arnold can crush our heads and sabotage <laughs> too. There will be an internet campaign going for us to have cameos in the movie where Arnold squashes our head like watermelons. I think it should be called Sabotages. Sabotages, oh, multiple man. sabotage, which just makes it a better movie. <laughs> yeah, because we're we'll be sabotaging him all over the place. That's sabotage from the previous year, 2014, directed by David Ayer. If you want to get a hold of us, check out our website, whmpodcast.com dot com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're at whm podcast. Right into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail dot com. Rate and review in iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get the program. We would greatly appreciate it. It helps out the show. It takes two seconds. It would be super cool of you. Uh, check us out at the Lily Pad, March 21st. It's a Saturday night, 8 p.m. WHMpodcast.brownpapertickets.com. Now, the final thing to, to end our worst of 2014, uh, people have been asking us for some recommendations of movies that we liked in 2014. Sure. So right. what stuff are we throwing out there that people should check out if they have not yet? Uh, a movie that's way better than Sabotage. It's a great action movie uh, is The Guest. I mean, it's more of an action horror, yes. but like it's lean, it's mean, and it just gets in and out. And it's really smart. and It's an cool. awesome movie. It's yeah. totally like uh, it's the dudes who made your next. So which is a great track from 2013. So yeah. Yeah. Um, that I think we actually recommended. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, keep going. Run it uh, back, man. Yeah. It's a total like John Carpenter love letter. Mm -hmm. Like that movie yeah. is like a John oh, yeah. Carpenter movie. It's it's really great. The soundtrack is amazing. And uh, Inherent Vice is one of my favorite of the year. I really really enjoyed Inherent Vice. Um, it's not P.T. Anderson's best movie, but I mean, he can still make like okay movies, and they're like sticking with me. Not We're that I think that this is just an okay movie. Okay. I, I, I also think Brolin should have got Best Supporting over Duvall. Like, 
Oh, he's awesome. That's that his movie. best performance, like easily. I think it's he's really great. But I think Joaquin's fantastic in that he movie is too. too. Yes, yes. That's and a totally overlooked performance. Also, Boyhood. Boyhood. You've heard of it. Uh-huh. If you, if you haven't seen Boyhood, I can't recommend that enough. Um, another one that I would recommend. It's a film called The One I Love. It's directed by uh, Malcolm McDowell's son, Charlie McDowell. Mm-hmm. It's um Mark Duplass and Elizabeth Moss. I think it's streaming on Netflix. It's like a weird. Yes, it is. Like, like that's how I saw it actually. It's yeah. like a it's like a indie ish romantic thing with like such a bizarre twist to it. That they thankfully did not give anything away for, mm. uh, like in the ads or whatever. But it's a totally enjoyable movie. Also, good Ted Danson cameo. Also, the Babadook, which when you watch it, which is a, it's a totally great movie, but you will be saying Babadook for a long time. <laughs> it's a fantastic movie. It's, a movie. it's really scary, but also like again, and I actually think that she's amazing in that movie and kind of was overlooked. I mean, not, not that awards really matter, and ever would an Australian horror movie be nominated <laughs> for an Oscar, but. She is fantastic. Speaking of not name, nominated for Oscars, and also some of our audience might disagree with me, but Snowpiercer, I thought, was one of the better movies of the year. Dude, Bong Joon-ho does not make bad movies, and this year was no exception with Snowpiercer. It's a really great movie. Great Tilda Swinton performance. I think that's on Netflix as well. It is, and it's, it's balls to the wall, and it actually like, proves to me that like Chris, Chris Evans has got like a good career ahead of him of just being like, he does that square jaw action thing, but actually brings something to the table as opposed to just like blankly looking at you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he's got a charisma and a personality. That and he boy's going to be a star. Yes. Well, if, Someday. If only he could break out in a big franchise. Oh, I've got my fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, so those are just some of the things we saw from last year uh, that you should definitely check out if you haven't yet. And also I will say this. Going into the next month, we have the Academy Awards coming up February 22nd. Uh, So the next month is kind of skewed around the Academy Awards a little bit. Steve, do you want to explain what we're doing? Yeah, every year we kind of make up a new theme month where it's we have like a wild card month. We're pushing it to February this time. (laughs) It's basically we're taking one category, each category, each major acting category and taking a terrible movie from one of the nominees and doing it uh so taking the piss out of people exactly so the clues for the entire month of february are just going to be those people sure so we're starting with best supporting actor so the clue for next week is ethan hawk he's nominated for boyhood do we think he will win for boyhood this is the other thing we will do some oscar right predicting here uh, you know I, I i walking over here i was thinking that but then uh steve reminded me about uh jk simmons. simmons and whiplash which i just recently saw which is also good not the greatest but good and it's really his movie oh, yeah. i mean i think he i now i'm thinking jk simmons is gonna win i think it's probably a toss-up between the two of them i don't see anyone else Too in fall. that supporting it dude that's a oh you're eighty what now? Yeah, that's a charitable. Let's uh, we'll haven't s- given you one in a while. Mm-hmm. We'll send you off to the sun god Ra in honor. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll bury not- you in jewels. <laughs> exactly. So we'll see what happens on February twenty second. But before then, next week's episode, Ethan Hawke. Do with that what you will. Until next week, I'm Andrew Jupin, Eric Siska, Stephen Sada. Take it easy. Yeah.